the Far East now to Macau, the tiny Portuguese enclave which, with its British neighbour Hong Kong, provides China with an outpost on the west. Poised like a disjointed fingertip in the Pearl River estuary, Macau measures just six square miles. But down the years, its importance has far outweighed its size. And now, with the government in Lisbon in new hands, there's probably more interest in Macau's future than ever before. It's a fascinating melting pot of a place where Chinese and Portuguese cultures survive side by side. It was discovered during the great era of Portuguese exploration and founded by this man, Orgue Alvarez, in 1557. For almost 300 years, Macau was the major gateway for trade between China, Europe and Japan until the rise of Hong Kong. And China, only three quarters of a mile away, still exploits Macau's position as a channel for the passage of its exports and a way in for valuable foreign currency. A situation which explains Macau's generally untroubled relationship with her communist neighbour. Macau was a haven too for Dr. Sun Yat-sen, who came here to write and practice medicine before returning to found the Chinese Republic in 1910. Macau, the capital, is a city of mystifying contrasts. Though statistically one of the most crowded places on earth, there always seems room to walk and admire the crumbling charm of its Mediterranean architecture and wonder how, with a population that's 98% Chinese, so much of Portugal remains mirrored in its shady, cobbled back streets and its pastel-painted villas. The spectacular facade of St Paul's Basilica, ruined by fire in 1835, is now merely a boon to Macau's lucrative tourist industry but with 13 other ornate churches, it helped the province live up to its official motto, City of God, there is none more loyal. For though Macau's also been dubbed the wickedest city in the world, it was once a base for legions of missionaries who campaigned to introduce Christianity to heathen Asia. The Catholic influence is still strong today among some Chinese and half-breed Macanese, as well as with Macau's small Portuguese population. Though two of Macau's biggest money earners, gold smuggling and the opium trade, have all but died out, and Hong Kong's taken over as the area's biggest port, Macau has boomed in the 1970s. There's little sign of prosperity among the families of the Inner Harbour. But thousands of others are making money, working in a new rash of factories producing almost everything, from American blue jeans to Chinese fireworks. Some aspects of life, though, have not changed. With almost 300,000 Chinese making up the bulk of the population in the province, Buddhism's the prime religion. Temples abound, and Macau's name was actually taken from one of them, Amar Gao, the fisherman's temple. Four centuries of Portuguese rule have been changed, but the culture of the Chinese have gone back in their way of life and even in their way of procession of a rich Chinese woman. After the body, file mourners on their way through the traffic to the cemetery for an equally ostentatious burial. Traditional industries also flourish at Macau, 
No one on the coasts yet found a replacement for the solid Chinese junk. Here at Bairu, power tools speed things up, but the craft are still mainly handmade and built to last at least one lifetime. The cows earned a worldwide reputation for crabs and other shellfish. Some catches of corn go straight from the fish tea to the capital's hotels and restaurants, where they take their place on the tourist menus as local delicacies. But much of the seafood's dried and packed by export firms for shipping abroad. Children help out their parents, often working long hours and then going on to school in the evening. The most obvious signs of Macau's growth are the new hotels which are rising on land that's gone up in value five times in four years to over 300 pounds a square yard. It's not just Macau's blend of European style and oriental atmosphere that attracts more than two million visitors a year. Most come 40 miles from Hong Kong, where gambling's illegal to spend a total of 25 million pounds at the tables and perhaps three or four times that much on souvenirs, hotels and sightseeing. Except for loans towards bridges and roads, little of the money necessary for Macau's expansion has come from Portugal. An equally little profit has gone back to the mother country. The reason is simple. Virtually all money-making enterprises don't belong to the Portuguese but a run from Hong Kong, or by local Chinese communists, with the blessing of Peking. Macau settled down to making a fortune after the turbulence of the mid-60s. The most troubled chapter in the province's history came when the Chinese Cultural Revolution crossed the narrow channel between Macau and the People's Republic. Macau's sleepy atmosphere disappeared as the local Chinese seized on the words of Chairman Mao with uncharacteristic revolutionary fervor. Students were soon seeing themselves as victims of Portuguese oppression and threatening the peace of the province. Violence erupted in December 1966 when Portuguese troops opened fire on Chinese demonstrators. Eight people were killed, more than a hundred injured. The Macau Chinese, backed by the mainland communists, raised a storm of protest demanding a full apology and compensation for the dead. In Peking, the new China news agency condemned the bloody atrocities organized by the bestial Portuguese imperialists. And at one point, Chinese gunboats stood guard over Macau Harbor and the governor actually spoke of pulling out the Portuguese community and leaving Macau to the Chinese. Pro-Mao and anti-Portuguese demonstrations continued, and there was a four-day boycott against Portuguese officials in Macau. Finally, more than a month after the shooting, the Portuguese gave way and apologized for the incident. It was a humiliating climb down for Portugal, but a necessary one if stability was to be preserved in Macau. In fact, the whole episode cleared the air, reduced the tension between Chinese and Portuguese, and paved the way to a new understanding between Lisbon and Peking. Communist China appeared satisfied with the settlement and with the opportunity they'd had to exercise a little gunboat diplomacy. Today, no gunboats survey Macau. Relations are friendly. And Macau's patrol boats spend their time checking on fishing licenses rather than on keeping the peace. Anyone they find swimming out of communist territory is picked up and returned as part of the 1966 agreement. And though on the map, Macau looks extremely vulnerable, even minor incidents are rare along this watery no man's land. The truth is that while Peking maintains that Macau is a part of China and will one day revert to Chinese sovereignty, it's happy to leave the province in cooperative Portuguese hands, as long as it provides a useful link for trade with the non-communist world. So satisfied is Peking with this arrangement that when the new Lisbon government offered recently to hand over Macau to China, the communists turned it down.
The Portuguese garrison in Macau is some 300 strong. Their roles mainly a flag waving one, but soon they'll be cut back to less than 100 and assume practically civilian police duty. The reduction of the garrison is the latest move by Lisbon to lower their profile here even further. For a decade, Portugal's got nothing out of Macau, and the newly appointed governor complains that Lisbon's more occupied with divesting itself of its African colonies than with developing its one and only overseas province. Colonel Garcia Leandro is Macau's governor. With Portugal under fresh leadership, how does he see the future? Considering relationships with Lisbon, we will have more autonomy with the almost total power of local decisions. With the new statute we have in this year, we have a big power, local power. This is the, the, the biggest change we have with Lisbon. But we maintain our links, total links with Lisbon. You do. And, um, well, how does How His Excellency, the, Excellency the, governor the Governor, view Macau's, Macau's future, future relations with China? With China? Uh, I don't I know exactly, exactly what is the future with the, the relationships with, the, with China. China. I think, I think uh, there will be, be a great, great advantage, advantage, advantage in, uh, in uh, contracting the relations China. with China. But, but uh, the problem, problem concerns, concerns more uh, China, China than, than uh, ourselves. ourselves. We cannot, we cannot do more, more than, than what, what we have, we have been, been doing to the approaching of this relations. Uh, our, our position, position is uh, uh, very clear, and now, now is the time, time China say, say anything, anything about, about, about this. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, there's, there's no, no uh, plan, plan uh, in hand to, uh, to uh, talk, talk about, about uh, independence, independence from the car. No, no, no. no, no. China, China hasn't requested. It's not a problem. Uh, yeah, this is this not the idea, idea because, because the, the people, people of Macau don't want this, this solution of independence and, and uh, we know uh, China, China don't want the, this solution for Macau, for Hong Kong. So that's so it's no same. question at all. <laughs> all right. Uh, now, what will be Macau's future emphasis on industry? I mean, I notice you have uh, gambling and uh, uh, tourism. Some people in the world, a lot of people think uh, is not good the, the gamble, but when we we came to Macau in 19 November of the last year, we have an economy with its, its basis on the gambling, on the tourist and gambling, and this is not uh, we have no choice. This is a, a real situation, and we have the second way uh, is the factories. We have uh, a lot of factories, good factories, and for the future in the, the, the islands of Taipei and Colwan. Uh, these islands are linked now with Macau with the bridge. We think we, we, have, uh, we can have uh, more factories and more industries. But now the, we expect, we, we need the, um, it's the, the time for the private initiative. We have the plans, we, we define the place to the new investments, but is time to the private initiative, and you will wait. You feel Macau is a safe, safe investment, investment for, for uh, uh, yeah, overseas, overseas uh, uh, yeah. yes. investors? Invest yes. Completely, Completely sure. sure. Completely sure. I, I have, I have uh, big, confidence big confidence in the future of Macau. Macau. Despite talk of investment and expansion, there's no real incentive for Portugal to develop Macau. When the army is reduced, there'll be only about 600 Portuguese citizens left in the province, and most of the money that's made there will go neither into their pockets nor to Lisbon, but to entrepreneurs in Hong Kong. The key to Macau's future undoubtedly lies with China, which so far appears willing to preserve the status quo. For China fears that any political change in Macau might also upset the stability of Hong Kong, through which passes much of our foreign exchange. Uh, 
A settlement over 400 years old is unlikely to change dramatically overnight. But whatever happens to Macau will probably not be greatly influenced by Portuguese rule. That, like St. Paul's, is little more than a facade.